And in continuing along this sort of sustainability theme, I'd like to turn to uh, Dr. Dyson. So I did Google you. I watched a lot of your videos. And I've heard you talk a lot about a sustainable future. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that means to you? And where does biotechnology fit into that? Absolutely. So wonderful to be here. And, and, and I'll start by, by talking about how I got here. So my mother's from Louisiana, um, and I went there a lot as a kid. But I went back in 2005 to a very different reality. Uh, after Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans, uh, I was one of the many people who went to try to help rebuild the city. And at that point, it became very clear to me um, just, just the devastating impact of weather events. That was my first time really seeing the devastating impact of weather events. And as weather events become more frequent and more intense, uh, you know, my question was, how could I be a part of the solution? So ultimately started a company called Coverti and then Air Protein with Dr. John Reed uh, and James White to really attack that issue. And so as we try to innovate to solve some of the problems, um, you know, thinking outside the box is necessary. Uh, in our case, we actually thought outside the planet, going to another government agency, NASA, during the space program in the 60s and 70s, they had the question, if we were to send astronauts to, on long space journeys, how uh, could we feed them uh, very effectively if they're gone for a year or more? And of course, if you leave the planet with with carbon, you don't pick up any along the way. You have to figure out how to recycle it. Uh, and so one of the ideas they came up with was to use elements of the air, essentially, to create nutrients and create closed loop carbon cycles. Uh, so we picked up where they left off uh, and began working on a way to take elements of the air to manufacture products and ultimately with air protein food. Uh, and one of the biggest problems, of course, is that the food industry produces more greenhouse gases than the entire transportation sector. Uh, and uh, it is a huge contributor to deforestation. 2019 saw record fires in Brazil to make room for, for cattle grazing. Um, so that's some, something that we're really focused on, on addressing. And so with the technology that we're, we're commercializing now, making food, essentially protein, protein being kind of the biggest culprit in all of this, the way that we make meat specifically, uh, making that from elements of the air and the way that's nutritious, all the essential amino acids, vitamins and minerals, vitamin B12 and other things, uh, so that we can deliver really cleaner, greener solutions for um, our progeny. So uh, as we, um, you know, this is a very exciting time. A lot of people worked hard on, you know, leading up to this initiative. I'm excited that it's being announced and that there is a, an effort to invest in advancing the bioeconomy. And as we do that, you know, th we can think about, the, you know, when, when my grandparents were farmers um, back in, you know, when they were born, uh, early 1900s, there were 1.6 billion people on the planet. Now, um, you know, we're almost at 8 billion, we'll be at 10 billion by 2050. We really do have to figure out how to solve some of the big challenges out there. And the bioeconomy really is gonna be a part of that. And so I'm excited with this announcement and to be here today. I wanna ask um, each of our panelists, um, quite unfairly, because it's an incredibly complex issue, in one or two minutes, um, to, to talk a little bit about how you think about ensuring that biotechnology is rooted in our values, principles of equity, ethics, safety, um, and, and security going forward. Wherever you are playing in this space, know why you exist. Your organization, your company, your research institute, and, and use that to drive how you build and how you grow. Um, you know, use that to inspire people. Uh, and it, at our company, every Friday, we have a company-wide moment of gratitude. And I am inspired by the team and how they're inspired by each other, the gratitude that they show to each other about how we're building towards uh, our objectives to have impact, the impact that we're looking to have. So I, I set that as kind of the base, um, you know, just to add to all the comments here. And in our case, you know, our air farming platform, you know, it's, it's all about creating products, creating food, nutrients in a way that's carbon negative, not just carbon neutral, but carbon negative um, to have that impact that we're looking to have as we continue to increase our population and have to provide solutions. It's a way of making uh, nutrients and products that use no arable land. So feedstocks are, you know, renewable power and elements of the air primarily. And so it's a new way of, of manufacturing where you can manufacture in any geography, any climate, any time, day or night, rain or shine. Um, and, you know, that's something that can have the impact that we're looking for. And, and, and in addition to that, um, creating things that are economically attractive so that they can um, be accessed by, by everyone, ultimately, have an impact, you know, here in America and globally. Uh, and that 
uh, economic attractiveness was the thing that allow us to scale um, to have that impact on um, producing things that are cleaner, that are greener, and better for both our progeny and for the planet.